In the year 2020, it is pretty safe to say that a majority of video game lovers have either played a Final Fantasy game or at least seen or heard of things from a Final Fantasy game. But then you have the rare people like me, the people who haven't played a single Final Fantasy game. Ever. The only thing I knew of Final Fantasy before playing this game was that Cloud existed thanks to Smash Bros. Yeah, I know, it is truly astonishing. Honestly, I found that this being my first game of the series had both negatives and positives. One positive would be that I got to experience what people claim to be the best title in the series for the first time. I know that this remake is actually pretty different than the original, especially considering only one-fifth of the original game took place in Midgar, while that is where the entirety of this game takes place. But I feel as if it is similar enough to understand why people love the original when it comes to the characters and story. This leads into my first negative, however. I didn't get to experience the great amount of nostalgia that many he had. I can only imagine how incredible it must have been to see Midgar, the characters, and the story in this remake after all of those years. This is for sure a huge selling point for the game and something that I wish I could have experienced, but of course, with this being my first Final Fantasy game, it was impossible. Another positive would be that I get to go in blind. This is great because I don't know what is going to happen next. Don't you hate when you're watching a movie or playing a video game and you know something is supposed to go down but it hasn't happened yet? It honestly hurts the experience for me when this happens because it leads to me knowing what to look forward to or that there is still more to see because I haven't seen that specific thing yet. Again, this is a difficult topic to touch on because I haven't seen anything from the original so I'm not entirely sure how similar this remake is, so maybe this wasn't a problem for previous Final Fantasy VII players. For the last negative, I wasn't able to be prepared for some of the goofiness that is present in this game. When you first start out, you're immediately thrown into action, blowing up a Mako reactor and all, but then as the game progresses, the characters do some silly things that are truthfully shocking at times. I was made aware of Final Fantasy games including this goofiness due to some reviews and impressions that I've read and watched where they mention that this isn't uncommon for Final Fantasy games at all. This wasn't that big of a deal for me because I did find some of it to be funny. For example, without saying too much, cloud dancing. That was both shocking and hilarious. So now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to just go in and say it. I had a great time playing this game. I found the story interesting, the combat engaging, and overall had a fun time playing the game. I have to say, I believe the beginning of the game, which would be the demo and a little after it, was one of the most compelling starts to a video game I've ever played. From the beautiful opening cutscene to how they throw you straight into the action as Cloud with the multiple personalities from the Avalanche crew, it opens the game with a bang. This beginning also does a great job at getting you used to the battle system and what it has to offer. And what it does have to offer is fun and engaging combat. In this game, I felt like the combat that forces you to utilize all of the tools at your disposal, which is a great thing. You have to make sure you're using each character's special abilities in your party, casting specific elemental spells to capitalize on the enemy's weaknesses, and taking potions and other items to ensure you to stay on top in battle. To do any of these actions, you need to fill up your ATB gauge, which is only made possible by attacking and taking damage, which is a great way to keep you using your weapons as well. I love that as you get deeper into the game, you start to figure out strategies of combat, like when to use certain abilities or spells, or that it's a good idea to switch to other party members for specific occasions. Another key aspect of combat is the stagger meter. When you're attacking an enemy, you add to their stagger meter, and when the meter is filled, they are staggered, which turns them into a punching bag and your attacks do more damage. This is the most effective way to deal with most enemies in the game, and there are different spells and abilities that help with filling the meter up quicker. This is yet another feature of the combat that encourages the players to use more tools. I also gotta mention materia, which is the stuff you need to obtain in order to get more spells and enhancements for your characters. In my time with the game, it wasn't hard to come by at all, with materia being at every shop and a vending machine as well as being placed around the areas you walk through while playing. I found that I stuck to using a lot of the spell materia for most of my characters because I felt that a lot of the weaknesses each enemy had was a different element type and only the spells were able to trigger their weaknesses. I believe that I could have underutilized a lot of the different types of materia due to this and I'm not entirely sure if this was a flaw with the game or if it was just me using it incorrectly. Like I said though, the battle system present in Final Fantasy 7 Remake is both fun and extremely engaging, which are the two best things I believe a battle system can be. While I believe the combat to be great, I can't say it is perfect. One of the annoyances I've found while playing would be how certain enemies and most bosses are very damage spongy. It seems as if you attack, 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 yet their life bar barely goes down. For bosses specifically, it can seem like a grind to finally get their stagger meter filled in order to do some good damage, but every time I did this, they would transition into their next phase. This was very frustrating because then it's almost back to square one, and you're doing everything you can to get a small sliver of their HP down again. Most bosses do, however, 
however, include moments where you can attack a specific part of them, whether it be a right or left arm or mechanical piece, which is easier to break and then adds more to their stagger meter. Still, the boss fights do end up being a little annoying due to them being damaged sponges. Another thing that I found to not enjoy all that much was the side quests in the different sectors or places you visit throughout the game. The reason I didn't enjoy them was because none of them were that significant and it didn't feel like I needed to be doing them at the time. In reality, it's probably better to complete them because they do give you useful items, but at the same time, I found it to be something I just didn't want to do. This was also the case because these side quests always seem to come up right after an important story beat and right before another important story beat, so it was hard to want to stop continuing the story to complete these quests that felt like a waste of my time. Speaking of things that felt like a waste of my time, this game included a lot of moments where I really stopped and thought, did this really need to be in the game? There were several times where I felt like this, and again, part of it was because the thing I needed to get to or the next step in the story felt like it was right in front of me, but then the game decides to go away from that to throw a bunch of stuff at you before getting to the part in the story. In some of these cases, I would get frustrated and annoyed, but then as I continued playing and going through what the game was giving me, I ended up being able to take something positive from what I just experienced, whether that be important character development or just a fun time. Other times, I wasn't able to take these positives away and I was just left questioning why that was in the game. Also, there were a lot of times in this game where you're making your way to the next place you need to go to and the game decides to have you stop and do some puzzles or they have a locked door that you have to go find a key to get through or even have several switches that you and your party members must pull at the same time in order to proceed. These honestly didn't seem needed whatsoever. I get that most games include puzzles and little mini games to get through the area you're in, but in this game, none of these moments were really fun and they felt like things that were just thrown in for the sake of adding some form of obstacles to get through. The most annoying of these were when I had to go and get a key to open a door. I had to regress to the next room where there were more enemies, grab the key, and walk back to the door. This was just not needed whatsoever in my opinion. Other than those annoyances, I enjoyed everything the game had to offer. As I previously mentioned, the story was very interesting and appealing. I wanted to keep progressing, even at times where I felt like it really slowed down, just to see what happens next, or learn more about the characters. The game does a great job at making the player care about the characters and what they are going through. I love the mysteriousness of characters such as Aerith, and how the game goes about delivering some explanation periodically so the player stays intrigued, or how they keep throwing you snippets of Cloud's past throughout the game. It truly got me engaged from the start and I wanted to know more about what was going on and who he really is. I want to also talk about the graphics in the game. I gotta say, the cutscenes are absolutely stunning and look beautiful. The character models look so real and everything looks so smooth and fluid. In game, the character models also shine, but when you start to look at the textures of the things surrounding the characters, you start to notice some downsides. Some of the textures in this game are just not good. A lot of the times you can see what I'm referring to in the doors and the ground. While this is the case for certain things, the districts and living places throughout the game are very pleasant to look at and walk through. All of these places felt densely packed and were fun to explore. There were, however, multiple places that were very boring to walk through, but this was mostly due to these places being things such as sewers or train systems. The city of Midgar felt so large and grand, it was the perfect setting for this game. Being able to utilize a lot of the underground walkways, train systems, and different sectors to give the players variety in what they see and explore. Overall, I had a really solid experience with Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm very happy with this title being my first that I played in the series, and it interests me on what the other games have to offer. I would recommend this to anyone else like me out there who hasn't experienced a Final Fantasy title before. I believe you will be able to appreciate what this game has to offer like I did. While the game does have its faults, like the multiple times it feels like what you're doing shouldn't be in the game, it still includes a fun and engaging battle system, an interesting and appealing story that intrigues the players all the way through, and enough content to warrant the $60 purchase. But I want to hear from you guys as well. Who else out there is like me and hasn't played a Final Fantasy game? Are you looking to purchase this game? And if you have, how has your experience been? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.